Good afternoon, everyone. I saw the Northern Hemisphere ice concentrations spiking to all-time record highs. I found it again and again across multiple data sets, dug into it, Arctic Basin sea ice all-time record highs. Anywhere on this map that you click shows a new record just spiking again, Barents Sea, Beaufort Sea, Chukchi Sea, Bering Sea, Kara Sea. Satellite data, severe malfunction. Canadian Ice Service two weeks ago showing that ice did not melt off to the lowest levels ever. Bringing in the new data set from the 10.7 centimeter flux showing down we go into the Maunder Minimum. And an interesting study that popped up during my research 2013. NASA study proves carbon dioxide cools the atmosphere. Taking a look through the data at cryosphere today, I noticed gargantuan spike in sea ice concentrations. So I started chasing it down. Northern Hemisphere sea ice anomalies spiking everywhere across the data set. Arctic Basin sea ice all-time record ever recorded since the satellite era began. Most of these maps, but not all, that you see in this area here are showing record concentrations except Hudson Bay and the periphery around Greenland, everything else shows record ice. Map here for you so you can see the names of the areas, specifically around Eurasia and North America and the Arctic Basin. Barents Sea Ice jumping to all-time record highs, followed by the Beaufort Sea spiking, Chukchi Sea massive spike, Bering Sea, again, massive spike. Kara Sea, all time ever recorded. When we look, though, at the Arctic sea ice extent, you see it's not the lowest ever. Checking with the Canadian Ice Service, this is how much ice they're showing across the Arctic. So when I look at this map here from Cryosphere today showing complete ice cover over the Hudson Bay, I have to say that there is a severe malfunction with their data set at the moment. It's corrupted and unusable. When we come over to NCEP water temperatures, you can see the zero sea water boundary where the ice concentrations match up with the Canadian Ice Service. They definitely are not matching up with what the cryosphere has. So I am pointing out that there is a malfunction and do not trust that cryosphere data currently until they fix their data set. Jumping from the Arctic Basin straight up to the sun, 10.7 centimeter flux. You see the downtrend when we get to 64, Maunder minimum repeat. A bit wider out here for you, you can see the downtrend, where we're heading and how quickly we're going to get there. Came across Strange Story 2013 NASA study proves carbon dioxide cools the atmosphere this is definitely a read for you here to block up 95 percent of the incoming harmful solar rays goes in to show that nitrous oxide and carbon dioxide both block as much as 95 percent of radiation and then bounce it straight back into space another article coming out during the same time almost all heating radiation generated by the sun blocked from entering by CO2, we never hear this information. I don't care if it was from 2013, three years ago, and it's an old article. I'm bringing it up because you didn't hear it, and it's the first time I've ever seen it. Why are we not told about this information? Why is CO2 always the boogeyman when it's one of our protectors? It increases our greenhouse crop yield. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of the video. And regardless if the data set's completely flawed from cryosphere, it is always good to be prepared for emergencies, especially with the approaching winter. We really don't know the severity of it, but it's going to be a very special one that will go down in the history books. It's going to be minimally as severe as the 1970s winters that we all remember so well, burying cities in snow. Will it get even deeper as we progress into this Maunder Minimum type grand solar event. It's to be seen. 